Hello, everyone. This is Hardik Parekh. Uh, first, uh, quick check. Uh, can you see my screen and can you hear me out? We're all good. Okay. All right. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me here. I'm really excited to be here presenting on this topic, which is uh, near and dear to my heart, which is navigating DevOps security journey with OWASP SAM, uh, Software Assurance Maturity Model. I'm one of the core members of OWASP SAM project. First of all, I wanted to uh, thank uh, B-Sides Knoxville for uh, scheduling this. Uh, at least for me, this is the first uh, online event that I've been attending. I'm sure this is the same thing for many of you. Hopefully, I'll get an uh, opportunity to come to Knoxville next year. Uh, before we dive deep into the uh, topic, I wanted to share um, my professional journey line. So just uh, let's spend a few minutes on who am I. So I started my career as a software engineer, and I got introduced to security uh, when I was doing my master's in computer science uh, at University of Florida. My very first professional exposure to security was when I was uh, at Dell and uh, I was asked to kind of uh, build a security and fan testing team. From there, I got an opportunity to bootstrap EMC's product security program. After that, I led various product and information security teams at companies like Intuit, Amazon, and Splunk. I'm also on an advisory board for a few security and data privacy startups. Um, as well as the non-profit trade organization called Comptia, which many of you might be familiar with. Uh, Comptia issues IT security certifications such as Security Plus and CISA Plus. But throughout my career, I also contributed to industry through Safe Code publications, Science Top 25 Programming Errors, CVSS uh, 3.0, and BSIM since version 1.0. So for those of you who might not be familiar with BSIM, BSIM is another software security maturity model, which is descriptive in nature. Uh, it was developed originally by Sigital by interviewing six uh, independent software vendors from SafeCode founding member companies. Uh, and EMC was one of them. That is how I contributed to BSIM. Uh, BSIM is um, more of a prescriptive model versus prescriptive model like SAM. And by that, what I mean is BSIM helps you compare with other security organizations uh, and which organization is performing which security activity at which level. Uh, that is what it helps describe. I started contributing to OWASP SAM uh, somewhere around 2016 and have been one of the core members of OWASP SAM project uh, since then. So before we start the talk, just wanted to get some legal stuff out of the way. I'm not speaking on behalf of my current or previous employers, nor am I here as a representative of my current or previous employers. My opinions are solely my own, and do not reflect those of my current or previous uh, employers. So quick agenda, OWASAM, um, I'm sure like some of you might have already used OWASAM in the past. Uh, some of you might be very new to OWASAM. So I wanted to spend some time for those of the uh, folks who are new to OWASAM, giving them introduction on who is OWASAM, what is OWASAM, why do we need a model like OWASAM and overall project history and background? OWASAM uh, version two has been launched recently in about February this year. So also wanted to quickly go over the highlights of what changes we made in uh, version two or version 1.5. And last, we will discuss how to apply SAM in your particular organization. My goal is to make sure that you walk away with enough knowledge to start applying SAM uh, in your organization starting Monday. And in the end, I'll um, open up for a few questions or feedback. Uh, if you already are using SAM and if you have some feedback, we can open up for that. Uh, or if you are new and if you want to start using it, uh, if you have any questions, we'll leave some room for that. 
So if you are in one of these 15 plus uh, different roles, uh, then uh, this particular talk is very useful to you. And as I mentioned, you will be able to walk away with uh, knowledge that you can apply to your organization. And this is our, like just a representation of our target audience, but mainly OASAM is uh, geared towards everybody uh, who is involved in building and securing products. So first of all, who is OASAM? OASAM is a result of hard work of the contributors around the globe over the past three years. This group represents different geographies, companies of various sizes, consulting and product development, as well as academia. As a result, OASAM is very versatile and can be applied in companies of various sizes across the globe. There are many times during the uh, design and construction of OASAM when we were having debates and it always was very helpful to get diverse perspective from this group of individuals because Many times when we were discussing about certain language to use, certain metrics, certain uh, guidelines, it was always helpful to understand the perspective from somebody from uh, South America, somebody from New Zealand, somebody from different parts of United States, as well as somebody from Europe. So this has helped us neutralize the language for uh, OASAM and also oral model where we wanted to make it so useful and so versatile so that anybody and everybody across the globe, as well as all different types of companies can use it, be it small, a little startup or big corporation. So what is OASAM? OASAM is one of the OAS flagship projects. And flagship status is given to projects with strategic importance to both OAS and application security in general. OASAM is one of those projects. I believe there are about 15 or 16 of all the OAS projects. They have um, received this status and OASAM is one of those projects. OASAM is a framework of software assurance that provides effective and measurable way for all types of organizations to analyze and improve their software security posture that is tailored to their specific risk that particular organization is facing. And the key thing is uh, one size doesn't fit all. So you really need to look at your organization's risk and your own maturity level when you start applying OAS SAM. SAM is full of useful resources that will help in evaluating uh, your organization's current security practices, providing recommendations or suggestions, for growing and maturing those practices, providing a way to demonstrate concrete improvements over a period of time, and defining and measuring security activities throughout the software development lifecycle. One of the big benefits of SAM is that it is vendor agnostic. SAM can be done in-house, or uh, you could have one of the several application security consulting firms help you with the assessment and creation of plans and roadmaps. So one of the uh, key thing about OWASAM is also, uh, it's very versatile and it can be used across different types of uh, organizations who are using different types of uh, methodology, be it Agile, Waterfall, or DevOps. So, why do we need a model like OASAM? Lately, if you see, there is a quest to increase speed across all different types of uh, organizations. And many times, security might be perceived as more of a hindrance uh, in accomplishing this goal of uh, increasing speed. At the same time, uh, due to this uh, increased pressure of uh, increased speed, Many organizations are growing in complexity with increased number of uh, tech stacks, various organizational structures, growth of open source software, and various deployment models, be it cloud-based model, on-prem model, multi-platform model, 
as well as responsive design. As a result, almost 75% of the vulnerabilities these days are application related. To standardize security activities in such complex software environments, we need a model like OWASPAN. So why OWASPAN? The most that can be expected from any model is that it can supply useful approximation to reality. All models are wrong. Some models are useful, says George Box. Now, George Box is one of the um, great statistical minds of 20th century. And I, I think one of the key thing over here is, as he says, all models are wrong and some models are useful. Why is that? Because we all understand that there is no, um, you know, each organization is, has its own challenges. It has its own risk profile and its own maturity level. As a result, there are no two organizations which are same. If they are same, uh, our life would have been much more easier. Uh, it would have been more like a cookie cutter approach if you go from organization to organization. But reality is different. The point is that you cannot find a model that will exactly describe the reality. There are too many variables. And most of the models are built mainly in the academic world, and we live in the real world. But you can have a model that is close enough to be useful, and that is what SAM is. SAM is that model which is uh, close enough to be useful, but not exactly representing your particular organization. SAM was defined with that type of flexibility and versatility in mind, such that it can be utilized by uh, organizations of various sizes with different types of complexities and organizations employing different types of development models, be it Agile, Waterfall, or DevOps. In addition, this model can be applied throughout your organization for a single line of business or individual uh, projects within the organization. Now let's look at some of the core principles of SAM. When SAM was uh, designed, we had at least uh, these four core principles in mind. First, an organization's behavior changes slowly over time. Changes need to be smaller and iterative to really take hold and make a difference. Second, there is no single recipe that works for all different organizations. SAM is built with that in mind and supports organization building a program that is tailored to the risk profile, culture, and maturity uh, they have in that particular organization. Third, the guidance related to security activities must be prescriptive. The solution must provide enough details for non-security people because there are many security initiatives which fail due to poor details, lack of communication, or invalid assumptions. Overall, the success of the program will be based on uh, being this model being simple, well-defined, and measurable. Now, for those of you who might be new to SAM, let's look at the project history. So SAM is not a brand new uh, project, OWASP project, or at least uh, even before there's a history, before even it came to OWASP. The first version of SAM was developed by an uh, independent software uh, security consultant named Pravir Chandra under the name of Open SAM. And it was, uh, the first draft was made possible through funding from Fortify Software. After a number of years, uh, it was kind of being stagnant from like somewhere around 2009 till 2015. A small group got together at OWASP and worked together to breathe some life into this uh, dead project, or not dead project, but it was inactive project. And SAM became uh, OWASP SAM project. So it is no longer open SAM. It is now considered OWASP SAM. But this is the history. Like uh, it started as an open SAM project back in 2009. 
the version first version after it came under OWASP uh, umbrella was version 1.1. It expanded and restructured uh, its predecessor into four complementary sources, core documents that describes the core SAM model, how to guide that explains how to apply this model, quick start guide to help accelerate learning and adoption. And the most important one is the toolbox, which is kind of like a spreadsheet that provides simple automation for data collection, matrix, and graphs. Back in 2017, uh, OWASM came up with a new version 1.5. The version 1.5 incorporates refinement of the scoring model to provide more granularity to the scoring in assessment. The updated scoring mo model has been designed to help SAM assessors and organizations avoid the awkward discussion on whether to mark answer yes or no, when it is honestly something in between, and show incremental improvements. We just launched SAM 2.0 in February 2020, where we have changed the measurement model one more time, and this time, uh, with the aim to add qualitative measurement to represent how well an organization is performing the security practice. Because in 1.5, we definitely added a lot more granularity, but it was still missing the key element of a qualitative measurement. And that was one of the key feedback that we received across the globe from SAM practitioners. So that is why one of the key things that we wanted to change was this particular aspect of the uh, assessment and measurement. Now let's look at the maturity levels and the assessment score at a very high level. So at very high level, there are four maturity levels, zero, one, two, and three. At level zero, a particular security practice is completely unfulfilled. At level one, a security practice is performed, but in an ad hoc fashion. At level two, security practice is performed with increased efficiency and effectiveness. And at the highest level, which is level three, security practice is performed with mastery at scale across the organization. Not everyone needs to make level three in all the areas. This is one of the mistakes that I've seen many of the new organizations make, they try to aim for level three in all different areas. And that is actually, honestly, not the good use of uh, your limited resources. The goal is not to max out on each practice, security practice in each area. What the target maturity should be for your organization is largely up to you, depending on the business driver and the risk your particular organization is facing. So in version 1.5, we had modified the scoring model to provide multiple choice answers to allow for a more accurate assessment. Previously in SAM and most of the models, the questions were like yes and no, which is great from like more of academic perspective, but in real world, as we all know, the answer many times lies in between the two. Let's take one example. So uh, looking at SAM 1.5, if you are doing the assessment, if you are trying to answer the question on education and guidance practice, are those involved in software development process given role-specific security training and guidance? That's the question that uh, you as an assessor is trying to assess. Now, you know, you have trained some of the developers and would like to train some project managers and QA engineers. But given the situation, how do you answer yes or no? Now, this is the dilemma. If you answer no, you get no credit. It looks like you aren't working on it, but actually you are. And if you answer yes, you may get full credit and may have issues down the road when you're trying to ask for training budget for other roles, such as uh, project managers and QA engineers because the dashboard says you already did this particular activity. And that was the challenge in the previous model 1.5. With the new model, you can answer something like some, 
or at least half. Sorry, I, I meant in uh, version 1.0 and 1.1. In 1.5, we added this new granularity levels uh, where you can add some or at least half and get the partial credit, but also have the ability to show improvements in your score when you finish the initiative to train the other roles. With the new model, we also change the wording to many or most and not all. And there is the rationale behind that as well. In practice, there's always some activity which will not be performed for a small group of applications for the right reasons. For example, if you know that some service is retiring in near future, well, you may not want to spend your precious resources in getting uh, that particular application in uh, compliance, and you can still get the full credit because that particular application is gonna retire anyway, very soon. So that is why we also change to, or at least we propose many or most and not all, because in real world, accomplishing all is kind of a tall task. And it's almost like, that long tail of like, you know, last few applications uh, takes you forever. So that is where we wanted to be more pragmatic and wanted to provide this uh, flexibility. Now, before we look at SAM 2.0, wanted to spend some time on introducing to the folks who are new to SAM uh, in version 1.5. So at the highest level, uh, SAM version 1.5, is defined in four critical business functions. Each business function is a category of activities related to nuts and bolts, bolts of software development um, practice that your organization might be following. For each particular business function, SAM defined three security practices. Each security practice is an area of security related activities that build assurance for that particular business function. For each security practice, SAM defines three different le levels of maturity as objectives. And each level within a security practice is characterized by successfully more sophisticated objective activities as well as more stringent success metrics than its previous levels. So this is uh, SAM 1.5 at high level. Now, one would ask, what are the motivations behind a uh, new model, new version for this model. So there are five main motivations. First is aligning with the most recent uh, development methodologies such as Agile and DevOps. And when we wanted to do that, our goal was to make it software development methodology agnostic because version 1.5 and its predecessors look more suitable for waterfall development methodology, even though it was not meant to be. So we kind of collected feedback from SAM practitioners across the globe, and we realized that it's missing key aspects of guidance in terms of how to securely build and deploy software, especially since CICD is part of Agile and DevOps methodology. Second motivation is to improve the measurement. Even though SAM 1.5 addressed the feedback about different granularity levels, it still did not address the question how well an activity is being performed, thus needing some qualitative measurement. The third motivation is to avoid orphan and unrelated activities in different maturity levels. There are quite a few security activities in version 1.5 and its predecessors were defined such that it lacks consistent theme across different levels of maturity within a security practice, which also resulted in few orphan activities, such as code signing. If you look at version 1.5, there's a security practice called code, code signing, and there's literally no consistent theme in the same uh, security practice and across different maturity levels. And also there was no uh, similar activity at um, maturity level one and maturity level three. So it was kind of like created more like orphan activity. The fourth motivation was arranging maturity levels in order of increasing difficulty. So this was another shortcoming of uh, previous time versions. It was sometimes 
possible that some of the security activities at higher level were in fact a little bit easier to implement compared to security activities at the lower level. Now, it was not very intuitive. Like, you know, if you look at maturity level, it's one would assume that as you go higher in the level of maturity, the implementation cost should be higher, but that was not the case. So we had to fix that one as well. And the last but not least was uh, SAM production process itself. It was slow and waterfall, resulting in major overhaul of work every time we needed to release new version. Just recently, in fact, uh, SAM itself, SAM project itself is on uh, CACD itself. That's a great progress. And that was also one of the motivation behind the second version of SAM. Now let's look at the SAM framework for version 2.0. This is the SAM 2.0 at very high level. And the areas highlighted are changes from uh, version 1.5, which uh, will cover in a few more minutes. SAM 2.0 is defined in three levels again. Uh, at highest level, SAM uh, defines five critical business functions versus four in version 1.5. And each business function is a category of activities related to nuts and bolts of software development in your organization. For each business function, SAM defines three security practices. Each security practice is an area of security related activities that build assurance for that particular business function. And for each security practice, again, SAM defines three maturity levels as objectives. Each level within a security practice is characterized by successfully more sophisticated objective and more stringent success metrics than the previous level. And overall, as you increase the level of maturity, you should expect higher cost of implementation. As I mentioned earlier, this is one of the area we uh, fix in version 2.0. If you look at the framework, you can see that governance is more focused on program itself, looking at more strategic elements, uh, such as strategy and metrics, policy and compliance, uh, education and guidance. We have renamed construction business function into design business function in 2.0, and introduced a new business function called implementation. Design, implementation, verification, and operations together cover the core of a software development life cycle. At high level, design is focused on three things, threat assessment, security requirements, and security architecture or secure architecture. Implementation is focused on secure build, secure deployment, and defect management. And we are going to spend a little more time on this particular uh, business function a little bit later. Verification is more focused on um, architecture analysis, requirements driven testing, and security testing. So these are more like testing and verifying type of aspects of this model. And last but not least is operations, which is focused on in incident detection and management and environment management where the apps uh, live on. So at high level, this is SAM uh, 2.0 framework. Now let's take a closer look at uh, security practices uh, in this new framework. Each security practice is divided into two streams, stream A and stream B. The purpose of these streams is to align and link the activities within the practice or the different maturity level. Each stream has an objective to be reached, and this objective can be reached in increasing levels of maturity. This way, we ensure that there are no orphan activities that seem only relevant on a single maturity level. Like, for instance, I mentioned code signing in version 1.5. Let's take a closer look at one of the security practices, which is requirements driven testing under verification business function to understand this stream concept a little bit more. So requirement driven uh, testing, a security practice is divided into two streams. The stream A 
control verification and stream B, misuse or abuse testing. These streams align and link activities in the practice or different maturity levels, as you can see. Each stream has an objective to be reached, and this objective can be reached in increasing levels of maturity. And each stream also provides that consistent theme across three different maturity levels. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the key changes in this particular uh, model are implementation, business function, under which secure build and secure deployment are the key practices, which are more geared towards uh, DevOps and agile practices. So let's take a, look, a little bit uh, closer look at this particular uh, security practices. So secure build. This practice focuses on creating consistently repeated, uh, repeatable secure build process and accounting for security of uh, application dependencies. As I mentioned earlier, in today's uh, complex world, there are a lot of organizations, a lot of developers, they use third-party open source libraries and some other dependencies. So it was important to include that particular aspect in coming up with the new model. The secure build practice uh, emphasizes the importance of building software in standardized and repeatable manner, and of doing so using secure components, including uh, third-party software dependencies. As you can see, the first stream, which is build process, focusing on removing any subjectivity from the build process by striving for full automation at level three. And automated build pipeline can include additional automated security checks such as SAST and DAS to gain further assurance. And flag security regressions early by failing the build, for example. Now, I'm not recommending that tomorrow everybody should start failing their build uh, based on uh, SAS and DAS results because there's a lot of work need to happen before that, such as uh, you need to uh, remove false positives. You need to remove noise from some of these tools uh, because most of these tools, they have some level of noise that they introduce. Once you remove that noise and then you have full confidence that the issues identified by uh, these tools, they are high confidence, high fidelity issues, then you could reach to that level. And that is the reason that that particular aspect is at mature level three. The second stream, which is software dependencies, uh, acknowledges the prevalence of software dependencies in uh, modern applications. It aims to identify them and track their security status in order to contain the impact of their insecurity on otherwise secure applications. In the most advanced form, it applies uh, similar security checks to software dependencies as to the application itself. And there are few tools available and there are a couple of uh, very good OWASP projects uh, in this particular uh, aspect. So for stream B, there is the OWASP dependency check and OWASP dependency track are the two uh, main tools which are available from OWASP to help with that particular stream. Now let's look at the next stream, which is um, secure deployment. Not stream, sorry, next security practice, which is secure deployment. This particular practice focuses on automatically securing deployments uh, to reproduction environment and all required secrets. One of the final stages in delivering uh, secure software is ensuring that the security and integrity of developed applications are not compromised during their uh, deployment. To this end, this practice's first stream, which is deployment process, focuses on removing manual error by automating the deployment process as much as possible and making its success contingent upon the outcomes of integrated security verification checks. It also fosters separation of duties by making adequately trained non-developers responsible for deployment. Some organizations, they have uh, uh, only certain developers who are more in DevOps roles, they are responsible for deployment. 
The second stream, which is secrets management, goes beyond the mechanisms of uh, deployment and focuses on protecting the privacy and, and integrity of sensitive data, such as passwords, tokens, and other secrets required for applications to operate in production environments. In its simplest form, suitable production secrets are moved from repositories and configuration files into adequately managed digital worlds. In more advanced form, secrets are dynamically generated and deployment time and routine processes detect and mitigate the presence of any unprotected secrets in the environment. And I'm not here to recommend any particular tool, but there are some tools available. Uh, some of them are open source tools. Some of them are built by various companies. So you can look at those tools to accomplish this particular objective. Now, this slide, I'm not going to dwell on this slide too much because I already have covered some of these aspects during the motivations behind the new version. But this is a quick summary of key changes that we introduced in SAM version 2.0. Uh, I wanted to focus on the last bullet, which is on the measurement. So the difference between SAM 1.5 and 2.0 is also on measurement. While 1.5 focused mainly on coverage-based measurement, the 2.0 version focuses on qualitative aspects in addition to coverage-based uh, measurement. So after looking at uh, all the changes that we introduced in 2.0, as well as introducing this uh, overall model to folks who are new, let's spend some time on how do you apply this model to your particular organization. As I mentioned, each organization is very unique in its own aspects, especially their risk profile and their existing level of maturity. So it is very important to start with uh, preparation. And preparation goes beyond just doing the assessment. So preparation, I'll talk about preparation a little bit more in detail in the next slide. But at high level, typical rollout approach for a SAM includes six different phases. The first phase is prepare phase, then assessment, then setting the target, defining the plan, implementation, and rollout. And it's kind of again goes back to assessment, thus creating more of a cyclic uh, process or cyclic and continuous change improvement process. So let's look at the first phase, which is the prepare phase. Prepare phase, in my mind, is the most critical phase um, for the success of SAM uh, application in your particular organization. It consists of four activities. The first one is to define the scope. So before even you start implementing SAM, you have to determine, do you want to apply SAM to the whole organization, a particular business unit, or some particular applications or projects? The reason for that is the scope really determines uh, the amount of work it needs to be done as well as what kind of uh, buy-in you need to receive. So that is what leads to the second one where once you identify the scope of your implementation, you can identify the key stakeholders. And they vary from uh, scope to scope because if you want to roll out SAM across your whole organization, you need to get buy-in from um, much higher levels of leadership versus if you are confining your scope to just particular business unit, then you need to take um, buy-in from that particular business unit's uh, leadership team. And if you are doing it on that particular, one particular application or project, then you just have to get buy-in from that project's lead. But the key thing is, once you define the scope, you need to get uh, critical buy-in from the leadership team. Once you get the buy-in, uh, you need to start spreading the word and do the evangelization because that is where you will get a lot more broader support. As part of preparation, please review the resources that we provided um, as part of uh, SAM uh, version 2.0 guide. 
for maturity level sam defines uh, objectives benefits activities assessment questions quality criteria success metrics and the cost i have uh, shown one example over here so if you look at this guide it it's pretty self explanatory and as i mentioned earlier that this guide has been created with a group of volunteers across the globe who work at uh, companies of different sizes as well as uh, academia so the language is very neutral and it's very uh, self explanatory spend some time in studying this guide so you understand how to use them after that you start doing the assessment in order to do the assessment you need to start conducting interviews with key stakeholders to evaluate the current security practices here we recommend the uh, in person approach versus emails this way you can explain the key intent behind any activity and clarify any potential doubts they may have there are three ways in which you can perform an assessment is a lightweight assessment there's a detail assessment and there is an a hybrid uh, assessment lightweight assessment is simply interviewing key stakeholders and recording their response during detailed assessment you ask for evidence for performance and quality of each activity being performed in the hybrid assessment model you ask for evidence only on a need basis for some of the activities and not all of the activities and at least from the most of the practitioners sam practitioners uh, the assessment takes a good amount of time like uh, it it depending on your organization or the scope that you choose it may take somewhere between 1 hour to 2 to 3 hours it really depends on what scope you are trying to cover so the most practical approach is the hybrid assessment now once you record the responses from the key stakeholders and uh, look at the evidence you can assign maturity levels using the sam spreadsheet that we provided one of the key thing about this sam spreadsheet will uh, call a bit more in detail in the next slide is uh, how we have come up with combined coverage based measurement as well as quality based measurement as i mentioned e security practice needs to be assessed on those two axes uh, coverage as well as quality so let's look at the example of a uh, spreadsheet or the worksheet that we have built for version 2.0 as you can see in the previous version we just had the question for example if this was an assessment for 1.5 it would have been the question do you test applications for correct functioning of standard security controls now in version 2.0 the way we have added this quality criteria are club together with the question so if you say no for any of this quality criteria or if you do not meet any of the quality criteria the answer for the question should simply be no you you cannot have yes if you do not meet the quality criteria so that is how we added the second dimension of measurement in this particular assessment and the key goal here was we had a lot of debate when we were uh, deciding on this one and we went back to the some of the sam core principles and one of the core principle is simplicity so as a result we decided to add quality criteria for each question this way time to complete an assessment did not significantly increase with sam 2.0 and this was the key thing uh, which help us guide in making this decision because we did not want to create this uh, very long and laborious activity that is why we added simplicity and we added this quality criteria to the existing question which was aim to cover the coverage Now, overall maturity score for the security practice is calculated by taking the average of maturity level one between stream A and stream B, and adding that to the level of maturity at level two and level three. And once you add all of this, 
uh, you come up with the rating for that particular security practice. Once you finish the assessment, you need to define the target as per business drivers and the risk profile for your organization. Now, the most important thing over here is to estimate the cost. So on average, it takes about five to 10% higher cost for every level of maturity. When you try to increase every level of maturity, it takes about five to 10% higher cost. We do not have concrete data, but this is based on uh, most of the STEM practitioners' feedback. This is the rough estimate. So you need to keep that cost in mind as well. And this cost, again, varies from organization to organization, their risk profile, as well as their existing level of maturity. So keep that in mind. Once you set the target, you can define the plan. And in order to do that, first you need to determine the change schedule as per the upcoming release and develop an update roadmap plan over the next uh, four or five phases. Now this phase-wise approach is also good for from the change management perspective. And what we recommend is uh, no less than three phases and no more than five phases to roll out SAM. We also recommend that you start with the most impactful uh, security practices such as training and awareness and threat assessment in the first phase. Once plan is defined, start the implementation. Implement activities using a SAM 2.0 guide that we have provided as part of the resources. Leverage other SAM projects. SAM aspires to be an umbrella project of all SAM, pro sorry, all OAS projects. And what it means is OWASP SAM project can map back to one of these SAM business functions and security practice. So we want to have this mapping done as part of future directions. And here are some of the example OWASP projects and how they map back to various SAM business functions and security practices. Now, as you can see, some of the um, OWASP projects such as OWASP top 10 that can map to multiple SAM business functions and not just one business function. After implementation, we need to create and update scorecards on regular interval by capturing scores from before and after an iteration of assurance program build out and communicate this progress to the management. The key thing over here is communication and again, these phases, they kind of last somewhere between three months to 12 months, 12 to 15 months. So it again depends on the scope of uh, rollout. The phase can be, uh, can last about three months or it can last up to 12 months as well. But the key thing is you need to communicate the progress to the senior management on regular interval. Now here are some of the available resources we have to get you started using SAM 2.0. All these resources are linked to oasam.org website. So if you forget everything, just remember one website, oasam.org. All the resources are linked to that particular website. So do visit that website. And one more thing, SAM Benchmark Initiative. So what is SAM Benchmark Initiative? It helps answer the question, how do I compare to other organizations? If you remember, we discussed another operations maturity framework earlier during this talk called BSIM. SAM Benchmark Initiative is inspired by BSIM. BSIM does a really good job at providing comparison with other secure organizations. And the goal of this project is to collect most comprehensive data set related to organizational maturity of application or software security programs. This data should come from both self-assessing organizations and consultancies that perform third-party assessments. We understand privacy is uh, key here because many organizations may not want to reveal their level of maturity or immaturity to the rest of the world. Keeping that in mind, uh, our data collection process uh, will be anonymized. And we will make sure that privacy is always at the forefront when we collect this data.
So before finishing this talk, uh, just a quick highlight on what is the future for SAM. So SAM will continue like the previous version. We are aiming to have smaller and faster iterative versions, uh, version 2.1, 2.3, so on and so forth. In fact, we just embarked on CICD ourselves. The second one, as I mentioned earlier, is references to uh, other OWASP projects uh, because we envision SAM being more of an umbrella project under OWASP. And all OWASP projects can map back to one of the SAM business functions. So we will definitely provide more references to other OWASP projects. And last but not least, is uh, it's a very aspirational goal of uh, making this assessment and roadmap creation more of an online process. That would really help uh, design this to match with the more, more, more modern uh, software applications itself. Uh, currently, if you can see, you have to download some of these resources such as this uh, spreadsheet, which we call it a worksheet, uh, to do the assessment and create uh, roadmaps. Eventually, we aspire to make all of these things through online assessment and online roadmap creation templates. Having said that, I, uh, the key call for action here is to start using SAM, SAM 2.0, and somebody says uh, proof of the pudding is in trying it. So I really ask everybody over here to start using SAM 2.0. And if you have any question, you can always reach out to me and other SAM volunteers. And also you can reach out to us for any feedback you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Hardy. We will go into a short break and then we will be right back with Ryan Tick. Thank you. <laughs> 